What is going on guys? My name is Aaron and welcome back to a brand new video. First off, I would just like to say thank you guys so much for over 100,000 views on my last Russ optimization video. I am grateful for every single one of you guys and I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for the recognition that that video got. So with it being 2021, I wanted to bring you guys an updated Rust optimization video. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So to begin optimizing Rust, we're going to want to go through our NVIDIA control panel. Sorry, AMD guys, I'm not entirely sure how to optimize your settings. I'm assuming there's a video out there, but this is strictly for NVIDIA users at this step. So to begin, you're going to right click and go to NVIDIA control panel. So I already have mine open here and we're going to go down to manage 3D settings. And I want you to take the time to go through my settings and copy them because these will render your best possible output. And the only setting in my managed 3D settings that is not required is the DSR factors. This is strictly for my Elgato and capture card use with a 1440p monitor and my 1080p capture. And then next for us, we're going to go down and select display settings and then make sure that your graphics performance preference is set to classic app. And once that's set, you can close out. And then once that is done, we're going to go down in our little search bar and type game mode. We're going to click on it and make sure you turn this off. I recommend to have this off as most cards are tuned to run certain games. And in my last video where I showed you guys how to overclock your graphics card, uh, this will actually hinder it. So I do not recommend having it on. There are videos out there on YouTube showing game mode on versus off. And personally, I recommend to have it off. And then guys, after that, another tip. To boost your performance, we're going to go to Control Panel, System and Security. We're going to go click on System. We're going to go over to Advanced System Settings. And on this little tab here, we're going to click under the Performance tab, Settings. And what we're going to do is select Adjust for Best Performance and hit Apply. And then once that's done, you hit OK. I have an okay machine, so I'm not going to do that, but this is to increase your FPS and take the load off of your CPU. And once that's done, you can hit okay, and you can close it out. Once that is done, we are going to go over to our Rust app. So go to Steam, you're gonna right click on Rust, go to Properties, and we'll get through this in action in a minute, but we're gonna go down to Local Files, Browse Local Files, you can close out of that. And here in our little viewfinder, in our folders, we are going to right click on rust.exe, go to properties, compatibility, change high DPI settings, and ch check where it says override high DPI scaling behavior, scaling performed by, and select application, hit OK, and apply, and OK. And then we're going to do the same thing for our rustclient.exe, properties, compatibility, change high DPI settings, override high DPI, OK, apply, and OK. And now, also in the Steam tab, we are going to set Rust to a set launch options, which is something that I had in my last video. So we're going to go Properties, and with the new Steam overlay, you can see your launch options. So here I have a little text document of the settings that we are going to use based off of the specs of your computer. So. For your low-end GPU users, I already have a preset here that was found on Reddit. Um, and here is your normal, which is something that we're going to go by. So Rust, I believe, is on DirectX 12. However, if you want to go to DirectX 11, all you have to do is change the 12 here to an 11. So here are the guides for your RAM. So depending on how much RAM your system has, this is how much I recommend to have allocated. So, so once you have this, we're going to go down to the search bar and type task manager. We're going to click on that and go to performance. 
So inside here, you are going to find all the stuff that you need. So I'll show you guys what to change and where to find the information. So for your max memory, I have 32 gigabytes of memory, which can be found in our computer settings, but most of the time you know how much you have. So for 32, I recommend having this number. So you're gonna copy and paste this number at the max mem. And then your CPU count is going to be right here, which is your cores. So I have eight cores and your threads is gonna be eight threads. And then force DirectX 12, no single threaded. And then what you'll do is you'll copy this and you will paste it right in your launch options right here. And once you're done with that, you can close it. Now, when it comes to running Rust, I recommend having Rust on an SSD. Now, for me, I have multiple SSDs and I have one optical drive. So I have my OS on one SSD and I have two SSDs for my games. On top of that, I also have an optical drive, which is a terabyte drive. I recommend to have Rust on an SSD because it will run the fastest and SSDs are a lot faster than hard drives. Unless you are running at an SSHD, which is a solid state hard drive, you might have higher performances, but still it will never be an NVMe or a SSD. Next, we're going to change our power settings. So this is a setting that I tend to see most people have set, but in some cases it is not. So you'll just type power options. You're gonna click on this and you're going to go to additional power settings. And in here, you'll see a drop down menu and you're gonna select high performance. This might cause a little bit of FPS increase. It may not. Um, most of the time people run balanced or power saver. Select high performance. And then once that is done, and the next thing that we're gonna do is optimize our drives. So what you're gonna to go to is you're gonna type defrag in optimize drives down in the search bow and click on it. So usually your system is defragged every week depending on what it is. For me, I have it set weekly and this cleans up your drives. So your drives get cluttered with information and they run slower. So what I recommend to do is set up a weekly defrag and clean on your disk. So for me, I have my local disk, my game drive, my extra 500 gig SSD, my terabyte, and my external drive. And all of these get defragged once in a great while. Obviously, as you see, it has not ran. And so all you do to do that is click optimize and it will defrag your drives. Um, the next thing I can recommend doing is if you have a 20 series or 30 series graphics card is following the video that I posted last time, which is to overclock your GPU. Please follow the instructions that I have in that video and please be educated on what you are doing to your card. Finally, we're gonna go over the Rust settings in game. So with Rust booting up, there's one thing that I want to talk about and that is running on an ethernet cable. So I know there's a lot of people who have pre-built machines and custom built machines that run off of Wi-Fi. The biggest thing that you're gonna notice in game is lag and your connectivity. So I recommend running your PC on an ethernet cable. Now, I know that is not possible for everybody and it will not have a severe increase in FPS, but you will notice it. All right, and now once we are in game, we're gonna go down to options. So here, I'm gonna show you guys the list of my personal settings that I believe are the best settings for Rust for your frame rate and your playability. So I'm gonna go over what each setting does and what is important and what is not. So for your options tab for gameplay, everything in this area minus the max gibbs will not affect your FPS whatsoever. So your field of view, I have mine at 90. I recommend have it at 90. However, you can run it at whatever you like. And I recommend turning on streamer mode if you're a streamer and you don't wanna be stream sniped. Your compass visibility and your rich presence is, is all personal preference. And these settings right here are all personal preference. Scrolling down to your censorship, you can turn nudity on and off and hide signs, all up to you. Down here, 
is Max Gibbs. This will have an impact on your FPS as this is how much entities can be showed on your screen. So for example, when someone destroys a wooden or stone foundation, you will see the particles that break off of that stone. I like to have it off because I do not like to be affected by that. So I recommend to have that set to zero. For your user interface, this is all personal. So for me, I like to have my mute global chat off and game tips off but everything else on, and I like to have my user scale a little bit smaller than max. Down to audio, this is all personal preference. I do not like to listen to music or the menu music, so you can turn that down. Your controls are all personal preference as well. Next is your screen. So this is kind of important. So for your resolution, play at your native res. So for most people, it's 1920 by 1080 or 2560 by 1440. Um, and set your mode to exclusive. Now in our set launch options, we made that prominent when we said windowed equals exclusive. And this is going to run your game in full screen. And then I recommend having vertical sync off unless you're witnessing some frame instabilities and you want to lock your frame rate, then go ahead and turn VSync on. But I recommend having it off. They say it sometimes fixes screen tearing. I haven't really seen any issue with that. Um, and then for your FPS limit, I would only limit that again if you're having some frame rate instabilities, um, but I recommend having it at zero. All right, with your graphics settings. So this is all determined on your machine. So most people have pretty average rigs and these settings have been the best settings that I have found with my 3000 hours in Rust. So for your graphics quality, for RTX users, you can have that set to six. I have mine at five because I don't need the ray tracing. Um, so I just have it set to five. Um, and for your shadow quality, I set that to zero. I don't think you need shadows in this game. Um, for shadow cascades, I have no cascades. That will have a big impact on your system. And as followed, max shadow lights, set that to zero. Your water quality, set that to zero. Your water reflection, set that to zero. And your world reflection, set that to zero. These don't really matter too much. They will have an impact on your performance, but when it comes to PVP and normal play, they are not very important. Next, your shader level. So for some systems, I recommend setting this at 300, and for all other systems, set this to 600. This does not have much of an impact, whether it's at 300 or 600. I just like to have my nodes and other textures to look very nice, so I set this to 600. However, in worst comes to worst, you set that to whatever the lowest point is. And now next is your draw distance, which I recommend to have set to max or 2,500 or set it to 1,500. Anything lower than that tends up to use a lot more RAM because it's loading each chunk of the map. You can almost look at it like Minecraft. When you turn up your render distance, sometimes it lags in the beginning, but your computer is rendering more of the world instead of rendering it at pieces each time. And then next is the shadow distance, and I set that to 50. Um, anastropic filtering, set that to one. Parallax mapping, set that to zero. And I personally recommend to have grass displacement on, as when you're looking for an item on the ground, you wanna be able to see what's on the ground. Next, mesh quality. So these settings are huge. So I recommend having your particle quality set to 100, your object quality either set to 100 or 200, and your tree quality set to 100 or 200, max tree meshes set to 50, and everything else zero for your terrain quality zero, grass quality zero, and decor quality zero. The game still looks beautiful with these settings, and I will add some clips at the end of this video of me playing, and the game looks amazing even though that you have turned down some of the settings. And the PVP aspect of the game is still very well playable. Next is image effects. So this is all personal, but these also have a huge, huge impact on your performance and your FPS. So for your, your image effects, I like to have anti-aliasing set to FXAA, depth of field off, ambient inclusion off, high quality bloom off, lens dirt off, motion blur off, sun shafts off, sharpen on, and vignetting off. Your anti-aliasing can be off or FXAA. This is all depends on how jagged you want your lines to be. Um, your depth of field, I recommend that off. I don't know anyone who plays with it on. So ambient occlusion and high quality bloom will 
have the biggest impact on your system and those should be off. Your lens dirt has really no impact as well as motion blur and sun shafts. They don't have an impact whatsoever, but I don't know anyone who likes to play with motion blur. If you like to play with it, go right ahead, but I do not recommend it. And finally is the experimental features. These should be off if you'd like to have good FPS as all of these really, really pummel your graphics card and put a load on your system. So with that being said, guys, these are the best settings, in my opinion, for your Rust experience. And if you guys would like to have any more information on Rust, please comment down below any questions that you guys do have, and I will follow up with them and try to answer them to the best of my abilities. Um, thank you guys again for all the support and the 100,000 views on my last Rust optimization video. It means a lot, and um, this is a great game, and I like where Twitch and Face Punch is moving with this game. I've seen it grow over the years, and it is nice to see that it is still relevant in 2021. So at the end of this video, and very soon, I will have uh, some videos of what it looks like with these settings. And overall, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed, please hit that subscribe button as well as that like and comment down below what you thought of the video, if you had any questions or anything else. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed, please comment, rate, and as always, subscribe. Bye, guys. Okay. <laughs>